declaro abierta. The 8,476th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them two documents. S stroke 2019 stroke 186 and document S stroke 2019 stroke 190, which contain the texts of two draft resolutions, respectively. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolutions before it. Daré ahora la palabra a los miembros del Consejo. I will now give the floor to members of the Security Council who wish to make a statement before the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Doy las gracias al señor representante de la Federación Rusa. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. We have before us a resolution that has been presented by the United States of America, a draft resolution submitted by the United States of America. We have finally arrived at the culmination of the United States the double standards show on Venezuela. One month ago and the day before yesterday during a Security Council meeting, it became absolutely clear that the majority of countries in the Western Hemisphere, irrespective of their political affiliations, advocate a resolution to the problems in Venezuela by the Venezuelan people themselves on the basis of dialogue. Such nationwide in dialogue, inclusive nationwide dialogue, is the most important Thing right now. But unfortunately, Washington is obstinately seeking to escalate tensions and to implement their uh, scenario for an, an unconstitutional change of government or an ouster of the government. Let us take a look at the text of the U.S. draft resolution uh, for, for wh what exactly the United States is proposing that the Security Council vote for. And here is what it is, uh, acknowledging the National Assembly of Venezuela, and I quote, the, the constitutional authority and the presidential elections that were held uh, last uh, March to, to deem them to be neither free nor fair, and this one year after they took place. For the sake of this, the U.S. drafted the resolution. The hypocrit hypocritical concern of the humanitarian situation in the country is a mere smokescreen. But perhaps the United States has another goal to enter into history. Were this resolution to be adopted, this would be the first time in history when the Security Council would dismiss one and would appoint another president of a sovereign country. Is this world diplomacy in action? I'm not even speaking of the political component here. This is not even a matter of Maduro and Guaido. Do you truly fail to understand that this is legally untenable and null and void? Is this thinly veiled trolling? Is it a mockery of members of the Security Council, those who plan to support the U.S. draft? Do you understand that you will become complicit in a legal theater of the absurd? 
the U.S. delegation cannot but note that their resolution has no chance of being adopted. Nonetheless, they are deliberately tabling it at the Council to then point a finger at those who allegedly are obstructing the establishment of democracy in Venezuela. You are now deliberately undermining the unity of the Council. But do you need this unity? Our U.S. colleagues apparently have forgotten what international law is. Uh, you only have uh, ultimatums, sanctions, and threats of use of force left in your diplomatic toolbox. Of course, we note that this has all been initiated solely to accuse a non-consenting state of obstructing the delivery of assistance to the Venezuelan people. However, this is yet another example of shameless propaganda. On 26 February, we spoke at length and in detail of the fact that Russia and China freely, without any problems, delivered humanitarian assistance to the Venezuelan people. Only the U.S. didn't manage to do this. Uh, they disregarded the sovereignty and inviolability of the borders of a sovereign state. I mentioned this the day before yesterday and will repeat it today. If the United States were genuinely keen to help the people of Venezuela, then they would operate through official channels through any of the UN ag accredited agencies in that country. But that's not their goal. This is but a smokescreen. Their goal is regime change. This is probably the most glaring, the most egregious, the most clear instance of implementation of the notorious uh, concept of humanitarian intervention, intervention with humanitarian component and with humanitarian pretexts. Such a rules-based order instead of international law is what is being proposed to us. And this is consistently being talked about by Western colleagues. For this very reason, we drafted an alternative draft resolution, the aim of which is not to stimulate, uh, not to incite political intrigues and regime change, but rather to genuinely help the Venezuelan people in their efforts to normalize the situation in the country. We stress that any international assistance needs to be delivered on the basis of the principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence, and the consent of a country's legitimate government. Furthermore, in our document, we extend support for international mediation initiatives, including the Montevideo mechanism, which would help the Venezuelan people to achieve what is most important now, namely political settlement. The U.S. draft simply has nothing of the sort because it is not geared towards resolving the problems. Yesterday, we convened expert-level consultations on our text. We listened to the views of members of the Security Council Council, including the U.S. representative, we heard not a single specific comment on our draft. Western experts said that they would not work on our text, and U.S. colleagues immediately tabled their draft for the vote. Where is diplomacy here? Where is the quest for compromise? This is all a combination of publicity, largely dictated by domestic political concerns and agendas. We regret the fact that the Security Council has once again been dragged into this. We are seriously concerned with the fact that today's meeting may be exploited as a step for preparations of a real, not humanitarian intervention, as a pretext for external intervention for the, uh, as a result of the alleged inability of the Security Council to resolve the situation in Venezuela. We wish once again to turn to those members of the Security Council who genuinely wish to lend assistance, not to become complicit in this political show. We call for all to vote against uh, the U.S. draft to support our document, which has been specifically drafted to avoid wording that uh, creates a dissent and is uh, genuinely geared towards helping uh, the Venezuelan people for advancement of international assistance and international mediation. Thank you. Gracias al señor representante de la I thank the uh, representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. We shall first proceed to submit to the vote the draft resolution contained in document S stroke 2019 stroke 186, submitted by the United States of America. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S stroke 2019 stroke 186? Please raise their hand.
En contra. Against. Abstention. Abstentions. The result of the voting is as follows. Votes in, fa votes in favor, nine. Votes against, three. Abstentions, three. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Council. It has not being it has not been approved, as I stated. I now give the floor to members of the Council who wish to make statements following the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. The situation in Venezuela demands our action now. The corrupt former Maduro regime has caused an economic collapse that threatens peace and security throughout the region. Millions of Venezuelans have fled their country in search of food, medicine, and opportunity. The time for a peaceful transition to democracy is now. Each member of the international community that joins in recognizing the Guaido government is supporting the people of Venezuela as they strive to reclaim their democracy. Mr. President, regrettably, by voting against this resolution, some members of this council continue to shield Maduro and his cronies and prolong the suffering of the Venezuelan people. This man-made crisis has extended well beyond Venezuela's borders and threatens to destabilize the region. Events from this past weekend show that Maduro will stop at nothing to maintain power, including the use of gang violence against unarmed Venezuelan citizens. Mr. President, regardless of the results of today's vote, this resolution shows that democracies around the world, and especially in Latin America, are mobilizing behind interim president Guaido. The United States will remain steadfast in our support for the legitimate Guaido government and the National Assembly. We look forward to genuinely free and fair elections and to a government that reflects the will and aspirations of the Venezuelan people. The United States will pursue all avenues to increase humanitarian assistance to Venezuelans, both inside and outside their country. There was, in fact, an additional aid delivery today to the border region, Cucuta, Colombia, emergency medical kits for 40,000 people, high nutrition food for enough for 10,000 infants for two months, hygiene kits for 35,000 people. I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate our concern about the safety and security of interim president Juan Guaido when he returns to Venezuela and we hope that all members of the Council will join us in doing so. Now is the time to strengthen our commitment to the Venezuelan people. We call on members of the Security Council to join in this commitment, and I'd like to express satisfaction that a clear majority of the Council did so today. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United States. I now give the floor to the representative of Peru. Mr. President, Peru voted in favor of the resolution on Venezuela in order to enable the Security Council in exercise of the mandate given to it under the charter of the organization adopt a decision which will contribute to regional peace and security. As 
uh, is hoped for by the international community. We uh, very much regret the lack of unity in this council to contribute to addressing the situation in Venezuela, which represents a, an unprecedented uh, threat to uh, p peace, security, and prosperity of the whole region. We need to avoid new escalations of violence and address the serious humanitarian situation being suffered in the country. And it's even more incomprehensible when this is a minimum text which, with a view to consensus, did not mention relevant aspects such as the constant violations of human rights and fundamental freedoms, the terrible humanitarian situation being suffered by the population, particularly the most vulnerable, the breakdown in a democratic order, the economic collapse, and the exodus of more than 3.4 million Venezuelans uh, who have fled this terrible reality. However, we are encouraged to see that the majority of members of this council have reaffirmed their commitment and solidarity with the brotherly um, people of Venezuela and that they con will continue to work towards the re-establishment of democracy in that country, an aspiration which will only be possible through the um, holding of free, just, credible, and open elections with the participation of all political parties as soon as possible, with the with the international observers involved, which will make it possible to ensure that all Venezuelans are able to live in freedom and democracy. Thank you. I thank the representative of Peru. I now give the floor to the representative of China. Mr. President, China pays close attention to the situation in Venezuela, and China supports the Venezuelan government in its efforts to safeguard its national sovereignty, independence, and stability. The Venezuelan affairs should be decided by the Venezuelan people. At the Security Council on the Venezuelan issue, our starting point is to uphold the spirit of the UN Charter and the basic principles governing international relations, promote a peaceful settlement of the Venezuela issue, and maintain long-term peace, stability, and development in Latin America. China opposes external forces interfering in Venezuela internal affairs and opposes military in intervention in Venezuela. It is regrettable that the draft resolution before us is seriously inconsistent with the China's principles position as stated above. Therefore, China had to vote against it. China calls upon the Venezuelan government and opposition parties to seek a political solution through dialogue and a consultation within the constitutional and legal framework. We hope the international community will do things that truly favor the stability and economic development of Venezuela things that are conducive to the improvement of people's livelihood in the country. Under the premise of respecting the sovereignty of Venezuela, we should provide constructive assistance to the country to promote a smooth resolution of relevant issues as soon as possible. Any actions taken by the Security Council on Venezuela should be in line with the above principles. And I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China. I now give the floor to the representative of Belgium. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President. Belgium voted in favor of this uh, draft resolution on the situation in Venezuela, uh, the draft resolution that has been submitted by the United States. We did so because this resolution incorporates the critical components of uh, resolving this, uh, this crisis in the view of both Belgium and the European Union, namely a peaceful political process fair, free, and credible presidential elections with international electoral observation in line with the Venezuelan constitution, encouragement of uh, inclusive, peaceful, and credible initiatives, safety and security of, of Venezuelan citizens and political actors, and lastly, unfettered access for humanitarian aid in line with humanitarian principles. Belgium also supported this resolution because nothing in its text justifies the use of force and because the text advocates seeking a peaceful solution. We regret the fact that some have obstructed this. 
as the Security Council prepares to vote on a, another draft, a competing draft, I wish to voice our intent to vote against this other text. Indeed, this text lacks a critical element for Belgium as for well as for the European Union. The solution to the Venezuelan crisis hinges on the organization of fair, free, and credible presidential elections. The Venezuelan people have suffered for far too long already. The time is ripe, it is, and it is indeed past time to allow them to decide their future. We also have reservations regarding paragraph three of this resolution. We stress the importance of humanitarian assistance in line with the principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence. It is not acceptable for uh, for rogue armed groups to intimidate civilians and members of the National Assembly who have mobilized to distribute assistance. Thank you. I thank the representative of Belgium for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Dominican Republic. Good afternoon, Mr. President. We wanted to take the floor to explain our vote in two regards. First of all, to state that for the Dominican Republic, there is no other possible solution to the crisis in Venezuela other than the holding without delay of free and competitive elections with guarantees for all groups and political stakeholders. This political, peaceful, and inclusive process must lead to Venezuelan society becoming reconciled with itself and overcoming the differences that have led to these situations of permanent tension, negatively affecting the Venezuelan people and the regional environment. Finally, and in order to avoid any suspicion, as far as we are concerned, the use of force is not an option. On the contrary, what we favor is an inclusive dialogue in which all political stakeholders and civil society will participate. This is an indispensable step towards a peaceful and democratic outcome to the situation respectful of human rights. Finally, we believe that we need to create the conditions in order to provide assistance to those who require it due to the serious humanitarian crisis afflicting Venezuelans. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the Dominican Republic. I now give the floor to the representative of South Africa. Mr. President, we want to take the floor to explain our vote. South Africa has made its position clear on the situation in Venezuela when we addressed this council two days ago. We reiterate our view that inclusive political dialogue is necessary to resolve the political crisis in Venezuela. We remain concerned at the serious humanitarian situation in the country and support the United Nations efforts to provide humanitarian assistance to alleviate the hardships experienced by the people of Venezuela. Mr. President, there is consent at the irregular procedure in tabling resolution before us. The dispensing of 48 hour practice for the consideration of the draft undermines due process and our ability to meaningfully engage on the text to reach consensus. We have before us two divergent resolutions on the situation in Venezuela. This is unfortunate. Isadagua believes that the Council should be unified in its approach to supporting the people of Venezuela in finding a solution to the crisis. We must speak with one voice in assisting Venezuelan people in withering the humanitarian challenges faced as a result of political and economic difficulties in their country. However, Instead of bringing the council and the people of Venezuela together, the relations illustrates how far this council is from contributing to deal with the crisis. The lack of unity of the council on this matter widens the divisions and undermines the credibility of this council to make a meaningful contribution in the solution of Venezuela. 
Ideally, Mr. President, the Council should adopt a resolution that will facilitate internal, inclusive, political dialogue among the people in determining their own way out of their political and economic difficulties. Furthermore, a Council resolution should facilitate the provision of international assistance based on the principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and based on th and through the accurate needs assessment. Thus, the provision of aid should be depoliticized and meet the needs of people of Venezuela. The reason why the, the resolution presented by the United States call for a peaceful political process, it is prescriptive on the outcome of this process and thus infringing on the sovereignty of Venezuela. Internal political process should remain the national prerogative of member states. From the outset, we can encourage parties to engage in a political dialogue, but we cannot dictate outcome of such as a holding of elections. Furthermore, the context of the crisis set out in the proposed resolution does not reflect a balanced understanding of the underpinning of the crisis in Venezuela. There are three elements in the US resolution that are in antithetical, the principles and values that underpin South African democratic dispensation and our foreign policy. First, in the preambular paragraph four, regarding the authority of the National Assembly to release political prisoners and grant amnesty, South Africa view this is a tandemant to a, the national, in the principle of the separation of powers on which South African constitution is predicated on. Therefore, South Africa cannot support, at the international level, the violation of this universal, sacrosanct, and inviolable principle that underpin the governance of the modern states. Second, South Africa cannot, cannot also support over paragraph one, which expressed deep concern that the present election in May 20, 2018 were neither free nor fair. President Nicolas Maduro was elected for a second six-year term in a presidential election on May 20, according to the National Election Council, CNE, of Venezuela. President Maduro was re-elected by a wide margin, getting over 5.8 million votes, according to TBC Luen, the, the president of uh, CNE. His total challenger, Henry Falcon, received about 1.8 million ballots, and the third place candidate, Javier Butishi, got 925,000 two votes. Over 8.6 million Venezuela went to the polls, putting voter turnout and 46.1%. The announcement was made when the CNA counted more than 82% ballots. So I respect the authority of CNA as the constitutional mandate body that is charged with the management of the electoral process in Venezuela, like in all our countries. This body declared Maduro a winner, and this should be respected like we do in all other election processes elsewhere in the world. This is based, this is the basis on which President Maduro enjoys legitimacy and general recognition. Third and final, Sadaqwa believes that opening paragraph four is partisan and biased as it stresses the importance of only ensuring security of the members of the National Assembly and members of the political opposition. A UN resolution cannot stress the security of certain sector to the exclusion of the others. As an impartial body, the UN should insist on the security of all Venezuelans. South Africa is thus, was not in the position to support the US resolution. I thank you. Doy las gracias. I thank the representative of South Africa for his statement. I will now.
submit to the vote the draft resolution in document S stroke 2019 stroke 190 presented by the Russian Federation. All those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S stroke 2019 stroke 190, please raise their hands. In contra. Those against. Abstentions. The result of the voting is as follows. Four votes in favor, seven votes against, four abstentions. The draft resolution has not been adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. Daré ahora la palabra a los miembros del Consejo. I now give the floor to members of the Council who would like to make statements following the vote. And first of all, I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Uh, thank you very much uh, indeed, Mr. President. As is clear, uh, the United Kingdom voted in favour uh, of the American text and against uh, the Russian one. Uh, I think the fact that the Russian resolution failed, whereas the American text was vetoed, uh, accurately pinpoints the unease that very many members of the United Nations feel about the situation in Venezuela and how untenable it is for it to continue. We were content, Mr. President, to vote in favor of the US text because it addressed important issues in Venezuela about which we too are concerned. It emphasized the importance of establishing the necessary conditions for a new and credible electoral process uh, in Venezuela. Despite the Russian polemic, the US text did not seek a permanent transfer of power to a different leader. It called for free and fair elections, and we believe uh, in that also, Mr. President. We believe that the Maduro presidency is illegitimate, and the National Assembly president, Juan Guaido, is constitutionally interim president of Venezuela, excuse me, Venezuela, until credible free and fair elections can be held. And these elections, Mr. President, are a conditions on the part of transition to peace. Secondly, the resolution acknowledged deep concern about violence and the use of excessive force by the security forces in Venezuela against unarmed peaceful protesters, including those, Mr. President, actively engaged in getting humanitarian assistance into the country to the benefit of ordinary citizens. There's clear evidence that liberty and justice have been systematically dismantled by Maduro's regime. And finally, Mr. President, the text addressed the economic collapse brought about by Maduro's corrupt policies, which led to the humanitarian crisis that has so far forced over three and a half million Venezuelans to leave their country for other countries in the region. This has placed huge strain on the social services uh, of their neighbors. We would like to thank the United States as penholder on this resolution 
for drafting a text that properly recognises the gravity of the situation in Venezuela. There are limits, Mr President, as to how far a government can inflict damage and suffering on its own people. Turning to the Russian text, the United Kingdom was compelled to vote against the resolution proposed by the Russian Federation today. We fundamentally disagreed with its content because it pretended uh, that there were threats to use force against the territorial integrity and political independence of Venezuela. There have been no threats to Venezuela's political independence or territorial integrity. Secondly, the resolution focused on alleged attempts to intervene in Venezuela's domestic affairs. As we have seen, Mr. President, the crisis has spilled far beyond Venezuela's borders and the current situation in Venezuela represents a clear threat to peace and security in the region. Thirdly, the text included a selective reading uh, of the UN Charter, one that we have heard before. It presents a biased interpretation of the events unfolding in Venezuela and its support of the Maduro regime. A full reading of the UN Charter, Mr President, would show that the Security Council should cooperate uh, to address the suffering of the Venezuelan people. Finally, Mr President, the text failed to explicitly recognise two crucial aspects of the situation in Venezuela. The humanitarian crisis, I should say the man-made humanitarian crisis brought about by corrupt economic policies and the need for free, fair and credible elections. Thank you, Mr. President. Doy las gracias. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom. I now give the floor to His Excellency Walter Lindner, Secretary of State of the Federal Office of Foreign Relations of Germany. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Let me explain why we voted in favor of the resolu draft resolution of the United States of America and in against the Russian resolution. We supported the U.S. text because the text recognizes the dire humanitarian situation, a man-made humanitarian uh, uh, situation, respects the sovereignty of Venezuela and conforms with the European Union's call for free, credible and transparent elections and promotes a peaceful political solution to the crisis. As for the text of the Russian Federation, it does not present a solution for the crisis. It supports a government, the Maduro regime, which does not represent the Venezuelan population and refuses to recognize the humanitarian emergency of its population. The text also includes unspecific allegations of violations of the UN Charter, while, however, efforts here in this council and of the international community do not constitute an interference with international affairs of a sovereign country. Also, serious humanitarian rights violations by the Maduro regime, plus the 3.5 million refugees fleeing from Venezuela to Colombia, Brazil, and even Peru and other countries, made the situation in Venezuela a threat to the stability and security in the entire region. We want to recall our main aims for Venezuela. We condemn the use of force. Second, the origins of the ongoing crisis in Venezuela are political. Hence, the solution can only be a political one. An inclusive and political, peaceful solution to the crisis must therefore urgently be found. Third, the stress to need to respond to the humanitarian needs of the Venezuelan people, and there is a humanitarian crisis, and alleviate the suffering of, of the most vulnerable. Fourth, we strongly renew our call for a peaceful restoration of democracy through free, transparent and credible presidential, presidential elections in accordance with international democratic standards and Venezuelan constitutional order. Thank you, Mr. President. Doy las gracias. I thank His Excellency, Secretary, State Secretary of the of Germany uh, for his statement. I now give the floor 
to the representative of France. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, we we regret the two vetoes against the, the U.S. draft resolution, a draft resolution that could have contributed to a political and peaceful resolution to the crisis in Venezuela, and that could have eased the plight of the Venezuelan people as they find themselves facing one of the worst humanitarian crises in their history. Contrary to what we have heard here, the U.S. text, which has accounted for a number of our demands, neither is a legal basis for the use of force, nor is an attempt to undermine Venezuelan sovereignty. As all are aware, France, as is the case with the whole of the European Union, consistently recalled its repudiation of force being used to resolve the Venezuelan crisis. And I echo what has been stated by the German State Secretary. The text for which we voted not only reflects the tragic reality in Venezuela today, but it also reflects our commitment to a peaceful and a political settlement to this crisis, as has been stressed on Tuesday by a number of states, including France, the organization of free, credible, and transparent elections needs to be the paramount priority with a view to restoring democracy in Venezuela. This is critical to deliver a political settlement to a political crisis. This is the reason for the existence of the International Contact Group, which has been launched by the European Union and Uruguay, of which France is a member. The position of those countries that have blocked this draft resolution after having refused to participate in negotiations amounts to protection for the Maduro regime. France, as is the case with the majority of member states of the Council, is of the view that it is incumbent upon the Security Council to emphatically condemn a blockage of humanitarian aid and the use of violence against women and men whose sole crime was how, was seeking to deliver assistance to their fellow countrymen. The use of the veto today may protect a regime that, have de that has decided to starve its people. The text presented by the Russian Federation patently does not deliver on any solution to the current crisis. It advances the illusion and maintains the illusion that the situation in Venezuela is uh, peaceful, and it introduces the specter of a foreign intervention at a time when 3.5 million migrants and refugees have fled the country, and uh, more than the majority of the people have been plunged into utter destitution. There there is not a single word in the Russian draft resolution for these millions of people. Uh, the word humanitarian does not appear, and yet access uh, for Venezuelan people to neutral, transparent, and independent international aid is crucially urgent. Mr. President, the deadlock we have before us today mustn't and cannot lead us to throw in the towel. France will persevere in its efforts inter alia through the International Contact Group. And in this spirit here, I reiterate our call for a peaceful, negotiated settlement to the crisis. This requires the organization of free, credible, and transparent presidential elections as soon as possible, as well as free access for humanitarian aid. At a time when Venezuela finds itself today at the brink of the abyss, our responsibility is neither to supplant the Venezuelan people nor to decide in their stead. On the contrary, it is to give them back their voice, to enable them to freely voice their views, to take ownership of their destiny. Therein lies the compass which guides France's initiatives. Thank you. Gracias al señor representante de Francia. I thank the representative of France. I now give the floor to the representative of Peru. Mr. President, Peru did not 
uh, vote uh, in favour of the resolution for the following reasons, because it does not take into account the basic uh, aspects of the problem in Venezuela, which is the existence of an illegitimate regime which has uh, provoked one of the most serious humanitarian crises and, ex and exoduses in the region, um, a result of its disastrous economic management and corruption. It also did not take into account the flagrant violations of human rights and individual freedoms or the urgency of holding free elections. Peru is fully committed to the Charter of the United Nations and its purposes and principles. We ratify that. But, on, but we cannot accept an approach which only looks at some provisions of the Charter which seem to be relevant for this case. Um, we can't support either mechanisms, dialogue mechanisms that have failed repeatedly because of the proven lack of commitment of the illit illegitimate regime. They have been used only to gain time and to stay in power and to continue with new violations uh, of human rights. Peru questions the willingness of a, regimen, a regime which, as we have seen at the weekend and as we've heard uh, two days ago in this council, is not only opposed to the entry of the required humanitarian assistance, but it denies the existence of uh, an emergency and a crisis. It ignores the situation, and it's not concerned about the 3.4 million of its citizens who have had to flee the disaster created by Nicolas Maduro. Thank you. I thank the representative of Peru for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Poland. Mr. President, Poland voted in favor of US draft resolution on Venezuela. We have decided to support the resolution as we believe that it is a primary responsibility of the Council to address urgently the worsening humanitarian crisis affecting millions of Venezuelans. The crisis, which is further exasperating by blocking by pro-Maduro's security forces the delivery of humanitarian aid. Every day without the aid is a day with more and more people suffering, including children, because of the lack of basic services, food and medicines. Therefore, we regret that not all members of this Council decided to engage in the consultation process. Another division among the Council members sends a negative message to a place that deserves better. At the same time, Poland has decided to vote against the Russian draft as it lacked basic and most important element on acknowledgement of the humanitarian catastrophe. We also reject the notion that responding to the humanitarian crisis in Venezuela undermines its sovereignty. Quite the contrary. Let me stress that it is in the Council's responsibility and its legitimate concern in line with the UN Charter to address the situations, just like now in case of Venezuela, which endanger the maintenance of international peace and security. Moreover, it is in response to call from the legitimate authorities of Venezuela. In conclusion, Mr. President, what really matters is the suffering of the people of Venezuela. They deserve the better future. We do hope that we will manage to meet their rightful expectations. Thank you. I thank the representative of Poland for her statement. I now give the floor to the representative of South Africa. Mr. President, the text presented by the Russian Federation is consistent with the South African constitution and values and principles of democracy funded on the rule of law. At the international level, Russian text assesses the principles of UN Charter and reinforces the funding principles of the United Nations based on the sovereign equality of all its member states. 
This resolution speaks to the principle of peaceful settlement of international disputes in line with the provision of Article 2.3 and Chapter 6 of the Nation Charter on the peaceful settlement of dispute. Furthermore, the Russian resolution reiterates the need to fully respect the principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality, and independence for the provision of international <laughs> law and assistance. The Russian text is a reaffirmation of the principle of the Charter of the United Nations, which enjoys universality in terms of its scope and application. It was on this basis that South Africa supported the resolution. Mr. President, ultimately, South Africa will encourage that any further action by this council should be guided by the genuine process to maintain national peace and security and promote unity of purpose in this regard. I thank you. Muchas gracias, señor. Thank you very much to the representatives of South Africa for that statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Indonesia. <coughs> Mr. President, Indonesia's position on the situation in Venezuela has always been consistent, clear, and principled. We have, we have had the opportunity to express our position on this particular matter a number of times. Indonesia regrets that we cannot achieve unity in the Security Council on how to address the situation in Venezuela. The fact that we are having two separate draft resolutions is a clear evidence of the lack of sense of unity among the Council members, which is sad. I must humbly submit in my less than two months in the Council that this is a sad day for the international community particularly for the people of Venezuela. This is undoubtedly a collective failure, a failure of us 15 that are seated in this table. Because we all came here today knowing that we would not reach the needed consensus for the adoption of a resolution. I would like to address the failure to reach consensus solution as follows. In the first instance, instances, both draft resolutions are incomplete, as they are not comprehensive enough and have become overly politicized. Thus, both drafts would neither be useful nor helpful to the course of ensuring the interests of the people of Venezuela. Both drafts give little attempt to finding a consensus on this highly sensitive matter. The need for flexibility in the Council and priority on reducing tension in Venezuela are of the essence. We would have liked to see more balance and all embracing draft. We would also have valued a more thorough consultative consultation preparatory process involving all parties in the discussion. Now, Mr. President, the situation in Venezuela is still worrying and thus the need for the Council to be united and take the right actions comprehensively and not exacerbate the situation. In doing so, Indonesia has always taken the principal stance that in order to achieve durable solution, the following points should be taken into account. First, the principle of non-interference, sovereignty and territorial integrity in line with the UN Charter should be honored. It should always be a starter in discussing any issues in the framework of the United Nations. Second, any solution should focus on an inclusive political dialogue involving all parties. There is an urgent need to address the large trust deficit and therefore we call all parties to accept the good offices offered by the Secretary General and restrain from taking action that will further deteriorate the already fragile situation on the ground. Third, there is urgency to address humanitarian need of the people of Venezuela, which is in dire need of humanitarian assistance. 
The United Nations must play an important role in deliverance and organizing support for humanitarian assistance. Fourth, the plight of Venezuela refugees affecting neighboring countries has to be urgently addressed. Now, this four point should be the element of a good consensual Security Council resolution. And without these elements, Indonesia refused to accept or reject both resolutions because they are flawed. If we really care about the people of Venezuela, then we should have a united front and find a joint solution. We continuously express the view of having a united front, and we have not done so. Mr. President, in all, in all honesty, I have to admit that my delegation is starting to believe that dialogue and negotiation are a luxury here in the Council. I was wondering as to how the Council can promote dialogue for a universally acceptable solution if its members have difficulty to sit together and have a dialogue in finding common ground. We beseech our colleagues to put aside their differences. Now is not the time to be divided by political rhetoric. Let us spare no effort to ensure that we will be part of the solution and not be part of the problem. Despite the deeply diverging views in the Council, Indonesia is of the view that it is still possible for us to arrive at a consensus in the future, as long as the Council lives up to its mandate and responsibility. We have still an unfinished business, and that is to assist Venezuela and its people to find a peaceful solution to their current challenges. I thank you, Mr. President. Muchas gracias, señor representante. I thank the representative of Indonesia for your statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. We deeply regret the fact that the Security Council has once again found itself dragged into this political show and misadventure. The, the draft submitted by the U.S. delegation was written for regime change, disguised as care for people. We've seen all of this already vis-a-vis -vis Libya, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan. We have already adopted a Security Council resolution on Libya a resolution that was unscrupulously exploited for bombings and brutish regime change. The damage that this has wrought is now known to all of us. Where is Libya now? What has happened to Libya? And what of those African countries uh, which are gripped by the tentacles of international terrorism from Libya? Washington and London have once again robbed an entire nation of billions of dollars and are forcibly imposing handouts which are contingent upon regime change. First, you create colossal humanitarian problems, and then you call upon the world to resolve them. It we, it, we were forced to exercise the right to a veto because the U.S. draft is not geared towards resolving the problems of Venezuela. For this reason, we propose an alternative draft resolution, a draft resolution that could have helped the Venezuelan people independently without foreign intervention to resolve their problems. Today, many delegations have said that it is necessary as soon as possible to hold elections in Venezuela. Elections or no elections, this is a decision to be taken by the Venezuelan people themselves. Do not decide for them. Most important is uh, dialogue, and you are literally and figuratively burning down bridges. Our document contained support for the Montevideo mechanism. However, dialogue and mediation clearly are not what Washington and those delegations supporting it are not what they are aiming for. Today, we've heard uttered by the distinguished representative of the United Kingdom all an old song. The Russian draft wasn't passed and the U.S. was vetoed. So for the sake of this, this entire thing was concocted. And tomorrow, this will be making front page headlines. And yet, the fact that our draft was killed, that won't be mentioned at all. And 
we have, we recall and we remember that this was done in the past. This was done deliberately, specifically for this purpose. You are deliberately fracturing the unity of the council, as has been mentioned today, and it's not the first time that you are doing so. Seventy members of the Security Council vote uh, seventeen uh, vote against uh, the our resolution, and this was an alliance-based thinking, alliance-based uh, discipline. Whereas the majority of those who support not not even Venezuela, but international law, there are far more of those. At least sixty, as has been reflected by the recent uh, meeting in Venezuela, which we held. Indeed, the numbers are far greater. More than a hundred of them are here, seated in this chamber. Today's vote is a glaring example of what, uh, why the veto is necessary in order to uphold peace and the right of peoples to determine their own fates. So today it was made evident that had this right not been conscientiously exercised, then the council itself would risk transforming itself into a threat to peace and security. It's a good thing that this did not happen today. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Venezuela today is completely at peace, a peace preserved by the constitutional government of President Nicolas Maduro, who is in full exercise of his legal powers and who guarantees the protection of national territory as well as the well-being of the Venezuelan people and effective control over the country. Let me repeat, there is no type of violence in Venezuela. If there are threats against peace, those threats come from abroad. With regard to the draft resolution presented by the United States and the government of President Trump, we denounce, first of all, that it falsifies the content of resolutions mentioned in that resolution of the Organization of American States, because the very charter of that regional organization establishes that states do not have the authority to determine the legitimacy of the electoral processes of another country. That authority does not exist. And if a group of countries decided to ignore the electoral results of President Maduro, they did so in their national capacity, which has no regional application at all. This is a failed operation. And today, our country fully exercises all its rights and privileges within the Organization of American States. So it's not true that we've been sanctioned or ignored by the OAS. That's false. And it's quoted as an example within that resolution. We also reject the fact that our Constitution continues to be used to attempt to justify a colonial intervention, supporting a fictitious entity which does not exist in our basic law. A, self, a government of a self proclaimed leader is a dictatorship without legal basis in Venezuela, and their spokespeople have also abandoned all intentions to call elections without consulting the people. All they have is the support of President Trump. European countries who are assisting the United States in this adventure are doing it despite the fact that their legal experts of their own parliaments have warned them that interfering in our domestic affairs as well as their coercive illegal action constitute hostile acts against our nation. The international community cannot understand how the Security Council can permit the deliberate violation of the fundamental charter of the United Nations and then that be done by those that have the obligation to ensure that the charter is complied with. Mr. President, we denounce the fact that no mention has been made of the violent acts that took place last weekend from Colombian territory towards Venezuelan territory. This was an international incident and not a national incident. 
And being an international incident, this is the responsibility of this Security Council. But it has been deliberately uh, ignored. The government of Colombia, to even up to today has not given us the photographs and supposed protocols that would show that this was a humanitarian operation and not an aggression. We are still awaiting this evidence. There is no international law, Mr. President, which allows a government of any kind to show up at a border with another country and attempt to force its way into that foreign territory and force in an unknown cargo with uh, using unknown protocols. Three days after the attack, on those uh, at those points, there are still um, m people with masks on throwing bombs into Venezuelan territory, um, and we still haven't seen any, sing not a single mention of this, or any condemnation of these aggressions. We want the world to know that when some countries here are expressing concern about the humanitarian situation in Venezuela, they never refer to the causes of the problem. It's illegal that acts of economic war be conducted against our country, violating the human rights of our people, uh, using them as hostages in a policy of p calculated cruelty in violation of the United Nations Charter. and. In addition to that calculated cruelty, they deny that those, those responsible of the crime, and I'll name them here, the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom. We also denounce the fact that these two colonial powers, one of them still very strong, another one in decline, in the course of one, not even two weeks, one week, uh, carried out the biggest uh, robbery of our country. More than $30 billion was stolen from the Venezuelan people. And they want to justify uh, this uh, theft. If they really are interested in the humanitarian situation and the well-being of the Venezuelan people, the first thing that they should do is return what they stole. The United States and the United Kingdom uh, were involved in theft and plunder, which cannot be uh, hidden under the cloak of uh, humanitarian aid. It's the same as the uh, covetous colonialism of two centuries ago, but today it's disguised with a salvation um, uh, ideology of uh, salvanis messianic salvation of those in the third world. We don't need these saviors, Mr. President. These covetous saviors will um, end up destroying every nation that they uh, enter. We do not need these saviors. At this point in time, they are involved in massive extortion against all countries who are legally trading with Venezuela. The United States and Europe are not a world government governing trade throughout the world. And these illegal acts are causing suffering for our people. This Security Council must ensure that we comply with international law and that we uh, combat the, these weapons of mass destruction being employed by the United States and the United Kingdom. Wars are not, uh, not just conducted with bombs. They're all, wars are also conducted with banks, and banks are being used to conduct war against our people. If indeed, Mr. President, the main function of this body is to maintain international peace and security, nobody will understand why the government of President Trump denies, uh, refuses to approve a resolution which prohibits the, the use and the threat of use of force when it comes to Venezuela. You know why they don't do this? Because President Trump is continuing publicly to threaten the Venezuelan people with the military option. It's immoral, it's irresponsible to extort money from, an, from a whole people in complete violation of international law and the fundamental charter of the United Nations. Yesterday, the president of Costa Rica indicated that he could not agree to the communique uh, emitted in Bogota with regard, last Monday with regard to the situation in Venezuela, specifically because at that meeting they discussed military force against Venezuela, and both Costa Rica as well as other countries of the region are refusing to support the violence of the United States and their allies against our people. 
we would like to denounce, it's very important to denounce, Mr. President, we'd like to denounce the fact that there is an ongoing military threat against Venezuela. That's why the United Kingdom had a warship last Saturday that was located at less than 80 kilometers off our coast, and they still haven't been able to justify their presence. For the same reason, the United States was involved in a display of troop movements on the Colombian side close to our border at the same time that they were threatening to kill our head of state. We also denounce that US spokespeople working for President Trump are currently fabricating a narrative of a number, an absurd number of supposed deserters from the Bolivarian Armed Forces, all with the aim of justifying the standing up of a so-called Liberation Army of Venezuela in Colombia in, uh, with the aim of infiltrating our country and destroying the peace of our nation. This is a criminal group and they and we hear about them in Colombian uh, media. This is no uh, secret. Um, this is a clandestine use of uh, militaries. These are mercenaries, uh, just the same as we saw in Nicaragua in the cruel Contra war. And it's very cruel, Mr. President, that the person in charge of that Contra operation in Nicaragua was Mr. Elliot Abrahams, who's with us here today. He's the same one who is responsible today in charge of the operation against Venezuela, the same one that used um, planes laden with arms disguised as humanitarian aid to bring about death and destruction in Nicaragua. And now we're supposed to believe that he's so interested in humanitarian aid in Venezuela, but what we're seeing is people throwing Molotov cocktails into our country. In conclusion, Mr. President, we demand of this Security Council a clear pronouncement against the use and threat of use of military force in all its forms and manifestations against Venezuela because we know it's a public knowledge that the United States is currently attempting to arm a clandestine uh, war with mercenaries that will enable it to appear in the same perverse way as it did in humanitarian colonial operations in the past as the supposed savior of our nation. In summary, we are simply asking what any responsible member of the international community and the United Nations would do. We're asking for the defense of the principles of the founding charter, namely respect for sovereignty, political independence, territorial integrity, and non-intervention in domestic affairs, the right to self-determination of peoples, and legal equality between states. But above all, Mr. President, we've come here to ask this Council for our right to peace. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. The representative of the United Kingdom has asked for the floor to make a further statement. You have the floor, madam. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I'll be very brief, but as a number of lurid claims uh, were made against my country, I'd like to respond uh, very quickly. Uh, firstly, Mr. President, to say uh, that I have sent you a letter in response to allegations made by the Venezuelan uh, representative that sets out very clearly uh, British policy uh, towards his country, and it's very much on the lines uh, of uh, the European Union uh, policy, which we heard about earlier. I think the second thing, uh, Mr. President, uh, to say that the, if theft and plunder of the Venezuelan people is occurring, it is because of their own government. It's not because of mine. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.